From its headquarters in San Diego, California, Calco Division of Merck and Company, Incorporated, has been manufacturing hydrocolloids for the food industry since 1929. Long recognized as the world leader in alginates, Kelco has introduced other useful hydrocolloids, namely biogums, produced by microbial fermentation, which advance the control we have over food properties. In 1969, Kelco obtained approval from the Food and Drug Administration for the first biogum sold to the food industry, Keltrol xanthan gum. Continuing its search for new biogums with food applications, in August 1987, the company submitted a petition to the FDA for food approval on its new gelling agent, Gelan gum, to be sold under the trade name Kelcogel. Through the company's research on Gelan gum, Kelco helped bring a testing method, Texture Profile Analysis, or TPA, into the computer age. First developed by General Foods in the 1960s, now through automation, TPA provides important data on food properties rapidly and efficiently. Many samples can be evaluated in a short period of time. To demonstrate, here is Ross Clark, research fellow in the Applied Rheology Department at the Kelco Research Laboratory. Hello. Before we talk about our new technology for texture profile analysis, let's define texture. Texture is a very complex, multi-dimensional sensation which occurs in the mouth whenever you chew a piece of food. It's the result of the food's shape, size, hardness, and how it breaks down. We measure texture for many reasons. To predict consumer response to a new food, to set standards for consumer acceptance of this new food, and to provide guidelines for product development. Measuring texture also helps us gain an understanding of basic gel properties, and this leads us to our lab and the texture profile analysis. General Foods developed texture profile analysis with a specially built instrument, but today it's more commonly performed on an Instron testing machine such as this. In the test frame of the Instron, there are three parts relevant to the TPA. A moving crosshead used to break up the sample, a load cell within the crosshead that measures the amount of force applied to the sample, and these two plates which crush the test sample. As you see, our Instrum machine is connected to a computer, which controls the machine, takes data, and performs the necessary calculations. Calco developed special software for this task, which is available to you. Now, let's run an actual TPA. It involves compressing a sample on these plates twice in succession. First, to prepare a sample, we form it in this mold, then place it in the Instron by removing the top plate, inverting the sample, and removing the rest of the mold. The test begins by slowly lowering the crosshead until it just touches the sample with a slight force. The computer calculates and sets the crosshead travel distance to the desired compression based on the sample height. Now the actual compression begins. The sample is compressed enough to slightly break down the structure. The crosshead travels back up, releasing the pressure then back down again. The computer is reading how much the gel broke down during the first compression and will later print out this data, which provides very useful information on this gel's properties. How does the computer report on each gel? It charts six important texture parameters. First, the modulus, or more completely, the modulus of elasticity. Modulus is the strength of the material in the linear viscoelastic region. We all do modulus evaluation when we buy produce. To tell if a tomato is ripe, we squeeze it, just slightly, not enough to do damage. So it is with gels. Modulus tells us how firm the gel is when compressed, before it causes any significant breakage. The measurement is expressed in force per unit area and is defined as the slope of the stress-strain curve in this region. Second is hardness, the other extreme of compression, showing the maximum force that causes the gel to break up. This is called the gel's strength, or the rupture point of the gel. 
Units are simply the force unit of the instrument. We go from modulus to hardness. Number three is brittleness, or how much the sample can be compressed before it is broken. During the first compression cycle, the first significant drop in the force curve is due to structure breakdown in the product. If we can only compress the sample 20% before it breaks, it's obviously more brittle than one that is compressed 70%. The lower the number, the higher the brittleness. Now, as the crosshead moves up and the force is released, the sample may stick to the two plates, causing force to go in the negative direction. The area of this negative peak is called adhesiveness, but not all samples are adhesive or sticky. As the second compression cycle is begun, the force usually doesn't rise immediately because the sample has been compacted by the first compression. Usually the crosshead must move down some distance before it actually touches the sample and the force begins to increase again. How much the sample springs back determines its elasticity. 60% elasticity is more springy than 30%. The percentage of elasticity is measured by the distance and the compressed sample height compared to the original compressed sample height, or as in this example, 79%. Finally, cohesiveness. Taking the area of the second compression cycle and determining its percentage of the first cycle. A sample that doesn't break down with compression has a high cohesive value and will not break up in the mouth as easily as one with a lower percentage. To illustrate the range of gel textures using CalcoGel gel gum, we have four gels. The red gel is 0.2% CalcoGel and no other hydrocolloid. The yellow gel consists of 1.66% of a 200 bloom gelatin, again with nothing else. The orange gel consists of 0.05% CalcoGel and 1.45% gelatin. And the green gel consists of 0.25% calcogel along with 0.75% of a blend of Keltrol xanthan gum and locust bean gum in a 50-50 ratio. Now let's look at how the texture varies if we press on these gels. We see that the gel made with calcogel gel and gum is quite firm and even pressing gently on it does not compress it much. But when we cut or break it and you see that it cuts fairly easily there's quite a bit of cineresis or water expressed. The gel here is significantly softer, more difficult to cut than the gel made with calcogel, and it exhibits very little cineresis. The blend is still quite firm and cuts more like gelatin, still very little cineresis. And this three component gel is quite firm. It requires some force to cut it, and it shows a slight amount of water loss after being cut. As you can see from these actual gels, adding calcogel allows you to create a wider variety of textures. For each of these test gels, the computer has tabulated data on the six texture profile parameters. Let's look at the results. In modulus, the gel made with calcogel gel and gum is comparable to the plain gel. On the other hand, the two blends of calcogel have a significantly higher modulus value. These differences would probably be perceived as the initial firmness experienced by most consumers. There are wide differences in hardness. The gel made with Kelco gel has the lowest hardness value. Gelatin is at the opposite end of the scale, as is gel made with Kelco gel, Keltrol, and locust bean gum, while gelatin made with Kelco gel is somewhere in between. Brittleness, too, has a wide range. Gel made with Calcogel gel and gum has the lowest value, compressed about 45% before breaking, while gelatin can be compressed to 80%. You see how the other two compare. Remember, a lower brittleness number means the gel broke sooner, and so it is more brittle. Certainly, consumers could distinguish the brittleness of gel made with Calcogel, but they may not be able to differentiate between the other three. Now, elasticity or how much the sample tends to spring back after being compressed. Looking at the data, here's how our four samples rate, from least elasticity to the greatest. Gel made with calcogel, calcogel and gelatin, gelatin, calcogel, keltrol, and locust bean gum. To the consumer, 
these two would be fairly similar. The others would be perceived as much less elastic or less springy and rubbery. Finally, let's compare cohesiveness, which tells us how each gel breaks down with chewing. Notice how the order coincides with the order for elasticity. Gel made with Calcogel gel and gum. The Calcogel gelatin blend is in between. Gelatin is significantly more cohesive and the three component gel is slightly more cohesive. Texture profile analysis is a very useful technique for looking at gels and foods. It's fast because it can measure many samples in a short period of time, and it's efficient since we get more than one piece of information out of each gel tested. We hope that this presentation has been useful and informative to you. We at Calco would like to help you in your work with Calco Gel, Gel and Gum, and Texture Profile Analysis. We are available to set up your tests on the Instron machine, supply you with our copyrighted software, or we can provide formulations and applications assistance for gel and gum. You can benefit from Calco's years of experience and research in the area of gel and gum. It offers you a new dimension in texture control that is playing a significant role in shaping food development for decades to come. Thank you.